this is a different style of video than we've been doing. It's an exercise video. So in this video, I'm going to describe a problem, give suggestions about how to think about the problem, give the solution, and then leave it up to you to fill in the details. So we're going to be talking about a classic problem in combinatorial probability theory, the coupons collector's problem. And in this problem, we have a set of objects, whether it's coupons, baseball cards, Pokemon cards, whatever, and we want to collect all of them. And if we're unlucky, it can go on arbitrarily long. But in the problem that we're going to look at, we're going to have a small number of coupons in a small number of days. And normally, people look at this problem in terms of what is the expected number of days required to collect all the coupons. And that can be readily solved using the geometric distribution. However, we are going to look at it from a different view, and we are going to try to uh, list out the sample space and the probability over the sample space for a small special case of this problem. So let's get to the specific setup. So our favorite coffee shop, the Inkwell in Long Branch, and that was my favorite coffee shop when I was a teenager, is giving out coupons for our favorite drinks in the Asbury Park Press, which is a Jersey Shore paper, for one week. And those drinks are the Russian Revolution, which we'll denote by R, South American Revolution, which we'll denote by S, and the Red Eye, which we'll denote by E. And we are going to collect these coupons for one week. And we want to model the sample space and the probability function for collecting these coupons for one week. So let's talk about how we're going to model it first. So we're going to model all the possible ways we collect coupons as strings, W, over the alphabet R, S, and E for the different kinds of coupons. And the way that the strings are going to be are the following. So first of all, the strings are going to have to have length between 3 and 7 because it'll take us at least 3 days to collect the 3 coupons. and seven because we're only collecting for one week at most. If we win, the string W will contain all the coupons and the last collected coupons exactly once. So just to give you an example, so a coupon like R, R, S, S, E would be a winning coupon, but R, R, S, S, E, R, R would not occur because we would not continue collecting for seven days if we won after the fifth. And if we lose, the, we are going to have a, a string of length seven. So we'll collect for all seven days, and we will have at most two coupons in those strings. And finally, we are assuming that each day we are equally likely to get all any of the coupons. So what that means is so if, if we are collecting for j days, so the length of the string w is j, then the probability is just going to be 1 divided by 3 to the j. So it's going to be uniform over the length of the string or the number of days. Okay, so let's get started. And now let's just look at the case of the strings for three days. And I already started this out. I, I enumerated all the possible ways we can win in three days. So three is not so interesting. Because all I did is I took all the three possible uh, coupons and I permuted them. And there are three, recall, three factorial ways to do that. So on the third day, on the first day I have three choices. On the second day I have two choices. And on the third day I just have one choice of what I can get. So that's what I listed out here. I listed out all of the permutations of the three coupons. And those are the winning, winning strings for three days. So what's the probability that we win in exactly three days? So that's just 6 divided by 3 raised to the 3, because we have a third probability of um, collecting the coupon each day. OK, now let's see what's happening in four days. We'll come back to that. So in four days, so first we want to consider what could have happened in, in three days. So we know that there are 3 to the 3 or 27 possible strings for three days. And we know we have six winning, so we have 21 losing. And I've started listing them off here. So the first three that I listed off, um, they're strings with only one type of coupon. So like R, R, R. And we have no chance of winning on day four when that happens. 
But we also have different strings, which I've listed below the dotted line, and those are strings for which we have two different types of coupons in three days. So let's see the different pattern that starts happening. So if we have RRS, so we got two Russian revolutions followed by South American revolution, there is a way for us to win. So if we go RRSE, we win. So we have a way to generate a win, but then we generate two ways to lose. So that's RRSS loses and RRSR loses. And all of these 18 strings for, for losing on day three have a way to win. And two ways to lose. So that's 18 ways to win. Then over here, we'll notice that these losing patterns, so we generate three more losing patterns, but they're not the same. So all, all R's on day four were, were going to lose on day five, too. But if we generate an all three R's and an S, or three R's and an E, we have a chance of winning on day five. And so these are similar to the ones below tradition. So the, w the thing to consider is that we're generating one way to win and two ways to lose. And then if we look at this again, so for if we win on day four, we're not going to continue on day five. But again, if we lost on day four, we're going to generate one way to win on day five and two ways to lose. Oh, sorry, I think I copied that wrong. Sorry about that. Oh, we have S's there. This is the RRSSS or RRSSR. So, so this would be winning on day five and two ways to lose. Okay, so that's one way to look at it. But here's another way to look at it. So we can look at the winning strings for three days. And if we look at this, we see that we have can generate three ways to win in four. So we can repeat the first. So we get Russian, two Russian revolutions, uh, red eye, and then South American revolution. Or we can repeat the second. So Russian revolution, two red eyes, and a South American revolution. Or we can go Russian revolution, red eye, Russian revolution, and South American revolution. OK, so what's really useful is that when we're thinking about this, we're actually thinking about how do we partition three distinct objects, in this case, the days. into two sets. And the two sets will represent whether we get a Russian Revolution or a red eye that day. So let's just list that out. So we just have one, two, three, one, three, two, and sorry, one, two, one, two, three. Okay. So that's how we can partition three distinct objects into two sets. And it turns out that this is known. So this is uh, called the Sterling number of the second kind for three, comma, two. So three distinct objects into two sets. So. Okay. And in general, if we have n objects into k sets, it's the 1 divided by k factorial times the summation, j goes to 0 to k, of negative 1 to k minus j, of k choose j, j to the n. OK, so now we can check readily for four distinct objects into two sets that we have 1 over 2 factorial, negative 1 times 2 plus 16 and this equals 7. So if you can verify that. So I will post a link to the triangle of Sterling numbers of the second kind. And I want you to verify or think about the relationship between S32 and S42. So what we've done is when we are learning a problem, a combinatorial structure or problem, we usually take small cases as we have, as I'm encouraging you to do. But then we step back and think about how can we generalize this. So in this case, we let m 
be the number of coupons. And we're looking at the special case of m equal 3 and n equal the number of days. And we're looking at the special case of n equal 7. But let's write in general what the probability is going to be of winning. So this will tell us the number of points that we have of each, of each length. So we already discussed this. So the probability in general of winning in i days, exactly i days, is equal to n factorial. That's the number of ways to permute the coupons m to the i, because each of the coupon is equally likely. And then it's the Sterling number of the second kind of i minus 1, m minus 1. So this is the ways to distri distribute the i minus 1 days over the m minus 1 coupons. So for us, the probability that we win is going to be the summation for i goes to 3 to 7 of the probability that we win in i days. So I'm going to list this out right now. And the numerators of all of these are going to tell you how many points in the sample space of each type we will have. So probability that we win in three days is 6 divided by 3 to 3, which is just 3 factorial. Probability of four days is going to be 3 factorial times 3 divided by 3 to the 4. So 18. So there will be 18 strings, uh, strings or patterns of four days winning. Probability of five days, winning in five days, is going to be 3 factorial times 7 divided by 3 to the 5. The probability of six days is going to equal 3 factorial times 15 divided by 3 to the 6. And then probability of seven days is going to be 3 factorial times 31 divided by 3 to the 7. So the numerators tell you how many strings, winning strings, you will have in the sample space. But let's see what the probability is that we win now. So the probability that we win is going to be the sum of all of those. So the probability that we win is going to equal 1,806 divided by 2,187. Okay. So in order to have a proper probability, this has to equal 1 over all the strings of the sample space. So we're not quite done listing out all the strings, or even accounting for them. And the reason why is we didn't consider the w such that we lose. OK, so these w have to have length 7, because we'll keep on buying the paper for the entire week if we don't collect all the coupons. And they can only have, at most, two, two coupons. So we can think of them like binary strings over two sets of coupon, uh, two coupons. So that's 2 to the 7. So they can just be, say, Russian Revolution and South American Revolution. And we have to choose all of them. So that's 3 choose 2. We have to choose two coupons to make the strings. And just recall, 3 choose 2 is 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 minus 2 factorial is just 1 factorial, so it's just 3. But we're, we're double counting the strings that are all R or all S or all E, and we're doing that three times. So when we do this, the probability that we lose is equal to 381, which is just this number. Um, divided by 3 to the 7, and when we add them, we do get 2187, and that's the entire sample space. So I really hope you'll spend some time thinking more carefully about the structure of this problem and spending a little bit more time enumerating it. And just to show you, like for example, some of the strings where we, where we lose in seven days are like all R, like I mentioned, or just, you know, alternating R and S. And you don't have to enumerate all of them, but you can definitely study some of the cases of the winning strings and the losing, losing strings that are patterns of days of collecting coupons. And I hope you enjoy looking at this problem.